It's World Series time, but what a change of scenery for baseball's greatest drama. Chicago's Comiskey Park, which hasn't had a World Series in 40 years. And then Los Angeles, which never has had a series. It's a great day for White Sox followers, whose wonderful loyalty has become a tradition of the game. They set a new club attendance record this year. Al Lopez's solid managing led the White Sox to the pennant. Walt Alston pulled the Dodgers to a playoff with the Braves to win. Joe Cronin, the new president of the American League, and his wife are early arrivals. He's been in these World Series himself as player as well as manager. Early Wynn, who topped the majors with 22 victories, will start for the White Sox. Roger Craig warms up for the Dodgers. The umpires gather at the plate. The color guard takes its position for the beginning of the flag-raising ceremonies. The capacity crowd comes to attention. There go the American League champion White Sox onto the field. Junior Gilliam takes Wynn's first pitch. The 1959 World Series is underway. Then Gilliam grounds out. Aparicio to Klazuski. With one out of the White Sox first inning, Nelson Fox draws a walk to become the first Chicago base runner. Johnny Roseboro knows about these go-go Sox and tries to keep Nelly close to the bag. Jim Landis singles to right. Fox races to third. And Roger Craig is in trouble. Ed Klazuski whacks the ball to right field. Charlie Mill just misses. It's a base hit. Fox scores. Landis sprints to third. And the White Sox have the first run of the series. Jerem Waller lifts a fly ball to right field. Norm Walker for the catch. Landis scores. And the White Sox take a quick 2-0 lead over the Dodgers. With one out in the White Sox third, Nelson Fox doubles down the right field line. It's hit sharply, and Larker can't cut it off. Jim Landis singles to right, a line drive that's just a little too high for Neal, and Fox comes racing home with another White Sox run. That brings Ted Klazuski to the plate. Klazuski really whacks one deep to right field. Norm Larker goes away back to the base of the wall, but this one is gone in the lower deck. Home run for Klazuski. Landis and Big Clue come trotting around. The former National League slugger who came to the White Sox from Pittsburgh in a late August deal gets quite a reception from his new mates. And the Chicago fans acclaim their new power man. Manager Alston decides that's enough for Craig. Chuck Churn called to the mound for the Dodgers. Churn Waller lets a routine fly ball to left center. Snyder moves over after it, but so does Moon, and it may be trouble. Whoops! The ball squirts out of Snyder's glove for an error. Waller reaches second base. Billy Goodman singles to right, and Waller scores. Smith slams the ball deep to left. It's a long drive. Moon goes away back, but this one is over his head. Snyder retrieves the ball, but his throw is a bit off the mark. Hodges scrambles for the throw, falls backward, and the ball carries away. Goodman goes home, while Smith takes third. It's the fifth run of the inning. Rivera slaps a ground ball to Neal. Charlie decides to go to the plate with the throw and should get Smith easily. But watch closely. The ball hits the bat lying in front of the plate and bounces away. Smith, who was ready to backpedal, comes on home. With Rivera on second base, early win doubles to left. Rivera scores for the seventh run in the inning, and the White Sox lead nine to nothing. <laughs> The White Sox for it, Landis on first, Kazuski belts another one deep to right field and goes all the way. 
upstairs for his second home run. Tremendous wallop of the bat of the muscular first baseman, and Ted comes jogging across the plate behind Landis. The crowd, another deafening ovation. Early win, already named pitcher of the year by the Sporting News, seems intent on more honors. He's pitching magnificently. In the fifth, Gilliam becomes strikeout victim number five. Wynn was removed in the eighth because of arm stiffness and Jerry Staley pitching the ninth. The Dodgers have Hodges on first, Larker on second, one out. Roseboro forces Hodges. Perillo batting for Wills flies out to Al Smith. And the White Sox win 11 to nothing. Pazuski alone drove in five runs and Landis had a big day with three hits. Game two of the World Series, and the players move through their warm-up faces. Juan Giles, president of the National League, obviously hasn't lost confidence in the Dodgers. The crowd is gathering rapidly. Johnny Padres will start for Los Angeles. For the White Sox, it will be Bob Shaw, winner of 18 games this year. Another capacity crowd eagerly awaits the action. In the White Sox first inning, Andres is greeted by Aparicio with a drive to right. Coach Don Gutteridge waves Louie around first, and he pulls up with a double. Fox flies to Larker, and Aparicio takes third after the catch. Padres gets cautious, and Landis walks to put two of the White Sox Swifties on base. Zuski grounds to Neal, and Charlie fumbles the ball, losing a possible double play, but he gets Clue as Aparicio scores. John Waller smashes the ball just out of Neal's reach for a single, and Landis scores to give the White Sox a quick 2 to nothing lead. In the Dodgers' second, with two out and Wills on base, Padres lifts a pop fly into short center, and the ball drops in beyond Fox's straining fingertips for a base hit. But Klazuski pulls Shaw out of that jam with a diving somersault catch of Gilliam's foul line drive. That's the sort of sensational catch that draws millions of people in the ball fight. In the Dodger fifth, Shaw gets one of his sinkers too high, and Charlie Neal hits one into the left field seats for a home run. But it's Al Smith and not Shaw who takes the shower. Unintentionally, an eager fan knocks over his drink, and in front of 40,000 fans, Al Smith takes a bath in left field. Concerned is Neil as he comes trotting home. With one out in the White Sox six, Bubba Phillips rams a drive down the left field line. A beautiful camera shot catches the ball in flight. It's fair by inches, and umpire Hal Dixon there to call the play. But the White Sox can't follow up the opening. In the Dodgers seven. Dodgers trailing 2-1. to Chuck Asijian, batting for Padres, pounds a home run deep into the stands in left center. And the ball game is all tied up. Shaw, a bit shaken, walks Gilliam. Neal rips into the ball again for a long drive to deep center. Jim Landis goes tearing back towards the fence in front of the bullpen and then has to watch Billy Pierce make a backhand catch in the pen 425 feet from the plate. Gilliam tallies ahead of the grinning Neal and the Dodgers go in front 4-2. to two. White Sox eighth, Larry Sherry pitching, Klazuski on first. Sam Waller slashes a base hit off Gilliam's glove. Maury Wills comes over and has trouble picking it up too. And the White Sox have two on, nobody out. Earl Torgerson runs for Klazuski. 
Manager Alston has a brief huddle with Sherry. The Dodger relief star steps on the rubber, checks the runner at second. Al Smith gets a hold of one and drills it into deep left center field. Over goes Moon, but it's going to the wall for a double. Torgerson scores. Moon plays the rebound to Maury Wills. The relay to Roseboro. Cuts Lauer down at the plate by a big margin. The Dodgers still have a 4-3 to three edge. With two out on the White Sox ninth, Nelson Fox grounds out to Charlie Neal at second base, and Los Angeles wins 4-3. to three. The Dodgers have come back from a decisive setback in the opener. Sherry protected a Padres victory. Charlie Neal swung the big bat, and the World Series is all even. Now by jet to Los Angeles in the first World Series west of the Rockies. This is Los Angeles, where a longtime dream of big league baseball suddenly came true two years ago. And here's the Coliseum, where over two million fans visited the temporary home for the Dodgers, as a testimonial to baseball's excitement and thrills. Here's the man who brought the Dodgers west, Walter O'Malley, with his wife, happily surveying the scene. Right-handers Don Drysdale and Dick Donovan are the third game starters. The huge crowd rises for the pregame ceremonies. And Old Glory waves briskly in California sunshine. The fans are in their shirt sleeves and they let loose a roar as the Dodgers take the field. Second baseman Jim Gilliam leads off for the Dodgers in the first inning and he hits one towards right center. It might be a base hit, but Landis makes a spectacular one-hand catch. Plays like that have ranked him as one of the top center fielders in the game. Still scoreless tie in the White Sox fourth, Jim Rivera the batter. Rivera hits a high foul ball down the left field line. Jim Gilliam goes racing after it, and so does Maury Wills. Gilliam makes a great backhand catch for the out. Thrills like these make baseball the great spectator sport that it is. In the White Sox fifth, with Fox on first base, Jim Landis strikes out on a 3-2 pitch, and Fox is out stealing for a double play. Of four White Sox trying to steal in the game, Roseboro already has thrown out three. Still nothing but zeros on the scoreboard when Charlie Neal comes to the plate in the Dodgers seventh with one out. Neal lines a single off the left field screen. That's only the second hit off Donovan. With two out, Locker walks for the first pass off Donovan. Hodges then also draws a walk and the bases are loaded. Manager Lopez, convinced that Donovan is tiring, calls on Jerry Staley to get the White Sox out of the jam. Staley works on pinch hitter Carl Perillo. Perillo rams one up the middle. Aparicio cuts over, but the ball takes a bad hop and goes for a base hit into center field. Neal comes spreading home. Larker also scores. Landis fires to third baseman Billy Goodman, who goes back to second, but Hodges slides in safely. The Dodgers take a two-to-nothing lead. The White Sox have left 13 men in seven innings. In the eighth, Pazuski gives them another opening with a single to left field. Drysdale now faces Lawler. It's a fly ball into right field. Moon apparently loses it in the sun, scrambles after it, and has trouble picking it up. Alston, having only a two-run lead, decides to make a change. He removes Drysdale and brings in his young relief star, Larry Sherry. The fans have special pride in this young man since he's a native of Los Angeles. Sherry carefully checks the runners. And then, on his first pitch, hits Billy Goodman on the knee. The ball caroms in the air towards the screen, and Billy writhes in pain. Goodman.
Friedman is finally helped off the field by manager Lopez and trainer Eddie Froelich. Sammy Esposito runs for Goodman. The bases are loaded with nobody out. Sherry gets Al Smith to ground into a double play. Wills to Neal to Hodges. Brzezuski scores, but that's all the Sox get, and they still trail 2-1. to one. In the Dodger eighth, two away, Wills on third. Charlie Neal rams one for two bases off Esposito's knee. Wills trots on home, and the Dodgers have added an insurance tally for a 3-1 to one margin. After Sherry fans Cash and Aparicio in the Sox nine, Nellie Fox singles through the box to keep Chicago hopes alive. But Sherry then also fans Jim Landis to strike out the side for a three to one victory that gives the Dodgers a two to one lead in the series. Larry Sherry has saved both Los Angeles victories. The fourth game of the series is being played on a Monday, but you wouldn't know it at the Coliseum. It looks like a holiday. Charlie Neal and Carl Perillo have been key offensive figures for Los Angeles. Roger Craig starts for the Dodgers against his opening day opponent, Early Wind. President Bill Beck of the White Sox and his wife, Mary Francis, relax a bit before the game. It's been a wonderful year for Beck. The White Sox won a pennant his first year with the club, and his showmanship helped set a new all-time attendance record for the White Sox. The pitchers are in command at the outset, and the game is scoreless as it moves into the Dodger third. With two out, nobody on, Wally Moon the batter. A base hit to left field. All season long, the former veteran outfielder of the Cardinals has been very effective hitting to the opposite field. Norm Larker drills a single to center. Moon heads for third. Landis fires to third, but the ball bounces off Moon's leg. Early win retrieves the ball, but throws to the plate too late, and Moon scores. Larker moves on to second. Gil Hodges pops a short fly to left field, but Smith is late starting for the ball. It drops for a single, and Larker scores. Demeter punches a single just out of Aparicio's frantic reach. Hodges pulls up at third. One of Wynn's pitches eludes Lawler for a fast ball. Hodges scores. Demeter takes second. Johnny Roseboro whacks a base hit to right, scoring Demeter, and Roseboro tries to stretch it into a double. It appears as if Aparicio has him. Nope, he dropped the ball. An error for Louie. Manager Lopez goes to the mound. That's all for win. Turk Lown comes in to end the uprising, but the Dodgers have a tidy four to nothing lead. In the White Sox seventh, one out, nobody on. Jim Landis singles to left center. A sacrifice by Aparicio moved Landis to second. The hustling middle second baseman, Nellie Fox, slashes a base hit off Craig's glove, and Landis moves to third to put a runner in scoring position. The White Sox rally now takes on a threatening aspect. Johnny Roseboro goes out to talk to his pitcher. Ted Klazuski singles to center. Landis jogs home for the first White Sox run. Fox moves to third. Manager Alston trying to settle Cray. Sherm Lawler carefully looks over the first pitch. But on the next one, Lawler connects. A long drive to deep left field. It's a way out and gone. Fox applauding happily and Klazuski tally ahead of Lawler. 
The score is deadlocked at four to four, and there's a reception committee awaiting Lawler at the plate. Gil Hodges leads off the Dodger eighth with Staley pitching. Gil misses the first one, a sharp curve, seemed to have him fooled. Staley working slowly and cautiously. But Gil doesn't miss this one. There it goes. Al Smith goes away back to the base of the fence, but she's gone. A home run. Here comes Gil, and the Dodgers are back in front, five to four. In the White Sox ninth, young Larry Sherry, making his third consecutive relief appearance in the series, quickly retires the first two batters, and then gets Klazuski on a fly ball to Moon in left field. The Dodgers win 5-4 to four and now have a 3-1 to one lead in the series. are in a gay mood. Their Dodgers need only one more victory to give Los Angeles its first baseball championship of the world. Vice President Charles Comiskey and his wife are rooting for the White Sox. Starting pitchers Bob Shaw and Sandy Kopak. Gil Hodges still very happy about yesterday's winning home run. Larry Sherry has reason to grin too. He got credit for a victory yesterday. With the game scoreless and the Dodgers second, Gil Hodges the batter. Hodges, it's a pop fly into shallow center. Aparicio and Fox both go after it. Louie grabs the ball, they collide, and down go the little magicians. But they bounce right back up again, Aparicio clutching the ball. Still no score in the White Sox fourth when Nelson Fox steps up. Nelly lines a single to right. Roseboro trails him down the line and tries to pick him off on a throw from Moon. Jim Landis lines a single to right, and Fox sprints to third. Nobody out, and Koufax has power men Lawler and Klazuski coming up. tries to hit the right field, but grounds sharply to Neal, who steps on second, throws to first for the double play. Fox scores with the first run of the game. With one away in the Dodger fourth, Gil Hodges hammers a terrific drive to right center. Jim Landis goes racing back, can't get it, and it rolls to the wall. Landis then fires to Aparicio. Louie relays into third as Hodges comes storming into the bag trying for a triple. He makes it safely with a long leaping slide to put the tying run on third with only one out. But Hodges gets no farther as Bob Shaw retires the next two Dodgers. Chuck Asijian in the Dodgers seven bats for Wills and Walks. Don Zimmer goes in to run for a Asijian. Duke Snyder is sent up to bat for Sandy Colfax. Snyder forces Zimmer at second, Aparicio to five. Nelly, however, misses on the double play attempt. Johnny Padres sent in to run for Snyder. Jim Gilliam singles off the screen for his fourth straight hit, and Padres stops at second. There's feverish activity in the bullpen. Manager Lopez tells umpire Bill Summers he is sending Rivera to right field. Shaw unleashes a wild pitch. Gilliam goes to second, and Padres to third. Charlie Neal, the batter. Neal slams the ball deep into right center. Landis speeds towards it, but now Rivera comes racing across and makes an over-the-shoulder catch. Al Lopez, middle of the inning defensive switch, paid off. 
In the Dodger eighth, Wally Moon lifts a routine fly to center. Landis is there, but he's in trouble. He's lost the ball in the sun, and it drops at his feet for a single. With one out, Hodges the batter, belts one down the left field line, right down the line. And both umpires call it foul. And the White Sox breathe easier. But for Lopez, it was far too close for comfort. He has a conference with Shaw. But Hodges isn't stopped completely. He singles to center. And Moon takes third when Jim Landis's throw is too late. Once again, the Dodgers are threatening the skimpy one to nothing Sox lead. Ron Fairley ready to pinch hit for Demeter. It touches off a chain reaction of strategy. Manager Lopez brings in his veteran southpaw, Billy Pierce. Manager Alston counters with right-hand batter Rapolsky. He's purposely passed to load the bases. Now Alston sends up his ace pinch hitter Perillo to bat for Roseboro. So Lopez goes back to the mound and makes another change. He calls in Dick Donovan. There's only one out, bases loaded, and only a fly ball needed for the tying run. But Donovan gets Perillo on a pop-up to Bubba Phillips. That brings Don Zimmer to the plate. Donovan retires him on another pop fly. Al Smith hauls it down in short left to complete a dramatic clutch pitching job by Donovan. In the Dodger ninth, Donovan retires Charlie Neal. Ground ball to Aparicio. That's the final out, and the White Sox win one to nothing. Chicago's chances are still alive in the series. So it's back to Chicago again for the close of the series with Los Angeles leading three games to two. Comiskey Park will be the scene of the closing action. Commissioner Ford Frick, who is the supreme authority in the World Series, talks with Frank Slocum, one of his assistants. Veterans Early Wynn and Johnny Padres are today's pitchers. The White Sox take the field and their battle for survival is underway. The fans seem to be aware of the odds the White Sox are fighting. With two out on the Dodger third, Wally Moon the batter, and draws a walk. Wynn is a bit wild. He has issued one pass so far in each inning. Wynn still grasping for his control when he faces Snyder. The Duke looks like the slugger of old as he levels on Wynn's next pitch. Duke gets a hold of it, a prodigious drive deep into the left center field stand. The ball traveled more than 400 feet. Moon scores ahead of Snyder, and the Dodgers are away to a 2 to nothing lead. It's Snyder's 11th World Series home run to tie in with Mickey Mantle for a second place behind Babe Ruth, who hit 15. In the Dodger fourth, Norm Larker the batter. Larker single. Manager Alston sends Demeter to run for him. With Demeter on second, following the sacrifice, Maury will single. Demeter scores, and the Dodgers lead three to nothing. Johnny Padres booms a drive to center that catches Landis short. It sails over the fleet outfielder's head for a double before he runs it down at the bullpen fence. Will scores easily from first base. Early win, the 39-year-old veteran who had started with only two days rest, departs. And Dick Donovan is called in to check the bombardment. Jim Gilliam draws a walk to put Dodgers on first and second. That brings to the plate Charlie Neal. Neal has been the Dodger hitting star of the series. Charlie blasts a double to right center field, and Landis is busy running down the ball again. Jim takes it off the wall. Padres and Gilliam score. The Dodgers now are leading six to nothing. Umpire Dascoli calls a strike on Moon. 
but the umpire never gets the chance on the next pitch. Moon drives it into the stands in deep right center for a home run. Neal scores ahead of Moon, and that's six runs in the inning and an eight to nothing lead for the Dodgers. With one out in the White Sox fourth, Jim Landis hit on the head by one of Padres' pitchers, but fortunately he wears a safety helmet and the protection it affords is graphically shown. Jim doesn't even bother to rub his head. He gets up, goes to first base, and stays in the game. Another batter thankful for a helmet. Sherm Lawler draws a walk as Padres seems a bit on nerve. Ed Klazuski the batter. Klazuski drills one into the right field upper deck. Ted knows this one's in there as soon as he hit it. Landis and Lawler score ahead of him as Clue circles the bases. Once again, he is accorded an ovation by White Sox fans, even though the Dodgers still lead 8-3. to three. It was Clue's third homer and tied a series record of 10 RBIs. Dodger ninth, Chuck Asijian batting for Snyder, facing Ray Moore. The Husky 200-pound outfielder levels on veteran Moore's first pitch and pounds it deep into the lower left field stands for a home run. It's the second pinch home run of the series for Asijian for a new record, and it makes the Dodger margin 9-3. Nevertheless, manager Alston goes to the mound for a last-minute conference in the ninth. Larry Sherry, who has hurled shutout ball since relieving Padres in the fourth, throws out Goodman for the first out. Norm Cash is next. He lines out to center fielder Don Demeter. Now only Aparicio stands between the Dodgers and victory. Little Louie flies out to Wally Moon. The Dodgers win 9-3 and bring Los Angeles its first baseball world championship. The players swarm around Larry Sherry, outstanding hero of the series. Next year, the scene may change, but the game will be the same. It's baseball, the world's most thrilling sport.